Hey guys. Uh, so I'm a nut. Um, uh, pretty much, I, I don't know, there's a lot of people in this room who already know who I am, so I'm not going to bore you with the like, hi, I'm Pistachio. I do answer to the word pistachio. Ironically, that is my Twitter handle, and someone mentioned about using your business photo as the Twitter handle and hiding behind it. That's actually what I did, and that's why my name is Pistachio on Twitter. But obviously, at this point, Twitter's kind of taken over my life. I, am, um, I finally came up with a catchphrase I'm comfortable with. I'm, I'm one of the world's foremost students of how Twitter can be used for business. I hate the expert word. I hate the guru word. I don't even like, if someone was very sweet this morning, called me a champion, which was very nice. Wheaties, okay, great. But really, for me, it's all about this just fierce intellectual curiosity that doesn't let me sleep kind of a problem. So we're gonna step outside of that Twitter for business core identity and talk today about something I'm even more passionate about, which is what we're seeing in social media in terms of social change. So there have been a few specific campaigns recently. I'll tell some of those stories. Uh, there's some generalized ideas that we're extracting from it. I'll explain some of that, but mainly I want this to be a bit of a question and answer, all right? So everybody be ready to project your questions nice and loudly so that we can have an active conversation. Um, everybody put your hands up, please. I used to be a speaker coach. This is a trick. People hate putting their hands up, so you start with them up. Put your hands down if you have not heard of well wishes. Okay, back up. Put your hands down if you have not heard of Twestable. Okay, good. Put your hands back up. Put your hands down if you have not heard of social media for social change, hashtag SM4SC here in Boston. Okay, awesome, thank you. All right, really, really quickly. Well wishes was this goofy dip, you know the next word, idea I had uh, at Christmas time. I wanted to shout out and thank and salute my clients, my network, my mentors, all these people who reached out to me and made the last year and a half of my life just totally insanely lucky. And a fruitcake wouldn't cut it. So I thought, well, okay, they've been kind. They've given me this platform. They've given me this visibility. Um, what can I do with that that's useful to others? And separately, about a year before, I'd become very impassioned about clean water as an, a global issue. Because one in six people on Earth doesn't have access to clean water. Which means while we're busy fighting AIDS and, and trying to solve all these complex and tractable health problems, 5,000 children a day die of diarrhea. It's shameful. It's like a human rights violation that people don't have safe, clean drinking water. One billion people, right? So this pissed me off. And I found a group called Charity Water. They surfaced on Twitter. Pete Cashmore did a great campaign. He's the owner, uh, CEO of Matchable, where instead of birthday gifts, he built a well in the third world. So I took this idea of how do I honor these people who've helped me, and what can I do about this thing that just depresses me when I think about it? Because these are you know, little children, something totally curable. And I said, great guys, here's what I want for Christmas. I want $2, just $2 from everybody who sees this message to build wells. And we're gonna be insane here. We're gonna go out and raise $25,000, $2 at a time. Now Boston is blessed with one of the world's foremost thinkers, uh, foremost students, we'll use that word on social media for social change, Beth Cantor. If you are interested in how social media can follow, help nonprofits, don't follow me, follow Beth. She is amazing. And I talked to her about what I was gonna do. She's like, well, there's a couple problems here. That's a really small ask, so it's gonna be a lot of work. I said, okay, great, but, but the point is the small ask, so there's no reason not to repeat and echo and pass along the acts. And the other problem is, I was gonna use a whole new tool, which is, you know, I brought up during Richard's talk, there, there are ways to make payments directly on Twitter now, and they're a lot lower overhead than PayPal. Disclosure, the campaign worked so well that the company I used did end up bringing me on as an advisor, but I was not an advisor during that, so I'm not here pimping them. There's about three different companies that let you exchange money on Twitter. So with that low overhead, we were able to make a relatively complicated and daunting fundraising challenge, quite easy, because it all just blew up word of mouth, right? Well wishes worked out, sorry, well, we raised $25,000, that means in five villages within the next year, wells will be built, we will receive GPS coordinates, we will share them with the whole community, we will see photo of the site, we'll all feel amazing, right? So that's what an influencer can do on Twitter, right? If they use their platform and that's, that's really big and that's really great. 
Now let me tell you what is actually kind of a failure about well wishes. Because during the campaign, and, and this isn't, I'm, I'm not really being competitive with her or, or setting well wishes up as a failure, but I think Twestable was just fascinating. During well wishes, as it was still going, someone who'd organized a wonderful charity tweet up in London came back and said, we're gonna do Twestable, which is what they called the charity tweet up in London. We're gonna do it again. But we're gonna let you do it too. We want other cities to step up and say, hey, we'll do a tweet up for charity. She thought, maybe 25 cities would do this, right? Now this is a woman in England named Amanda, at Amanda on Twitter, so very early adopter. I think at the time she had about a thousand followers. I haven't, I haven't tracked back to the exact number, right? So contrast, I had 12,500 followers when I started Well Wishes. I have over 20,000 now. She had about a thousand. But she put an idea out there in such a way that it went six times around the world further than my idea ever did. And so here's a lesson you can take to business for social media, to social good for social media. The real influencers, don't get hung up on Scoble and Brogan and Gary Vee. The real influencer is the frigging idea. 202 cities had a Twestable. $250,000 or more were raised. That was the last count I saw. I think it's higher now, right? So. Here I am, like, busting my gut for a month, going, hey, for my birthday, hey, for Christmas, you know, 25,000, that's nice. $250,000, right? So it's not about the number of followers you have, it's about how you put the idea out there and how you engage other people to do it. Yeah, like 17 countries will be helped for it. They estimate that 20,000 people participated directly in that night. So the awareness raising, the press it got, the number of tweets coming out of those 202 simultaneous tweet ups. And that was history. That was history being made. That 202 events around the world with no corporate sponsor, with no central organizing body telling people how to do it. Just a lot of passion and a lot of ideas and a lot of contagion. People obsess over what can I make viral? Well, you can make things viral by involving people, making it about them. My campaign was about, okay, you know, let's all get together and help, and that's great, and that's important. And good things are happening in social media from that too, that stone soup effect, you know, what can you bring, what can I bring? But hers was about, hey, go try this. You can do this, this is important. And giving other people the energy and the incentive and the initiative to do it. Um, both great models, both showing some really exciting things we can do now. One other comment on both of those models is that because social media is ad hoc and self-organized, we can take the threshold of helping down to a very low cost point, yeah? So a $2 donation isn't painful for anybody. And as the recession gets worse, and as more of our friends get into trouble, the ability to pull together in huge groups for low amounts per person is going to be really powerful and interesting and important. One last thing that um, happened again here in Boston, pink slip party, right? Now, I'm almost embarrassed how much press I got for this because it wasn't about me. It was really about what Twitter can do. I had seven friends laid off in one week and I was a little overwhelmed. I can't tweet out seven different friends needing a job. I can't help all these people. So I said, guys, let's get beer tomorrow. And then, oh heck, I threw on the, the hashtag, Pink Slip Party. And the thing took on a life of its own. In 20 hours, we had a venue, we had six sponsors, we had career counseling services, resume rewrite, press. Uh, it just, it took off a body of its own. Uh, 45 people came, some recruiters, some hirers, lots of people looking for work, and we had a very upbeat, it wasn't your typical 2001, like, oh my God, we have to. We had a very upbeat, engaging experience. It was stone soup. Someone stepped up, put down the kettle in the market square, and said, I'm gonna make soup from this rock, and it's gonna be delicious, and we're gonna go. And that was all I did. And then I you know, walked away and worked for 20 hours while life went on. People started throwing in carrots, they threw in celery, and we had a fantastic soup. So these are some of the ways, think about the handles, the leverage, the ways to give the ideas their own wings. One of my most embarrassing tweets ever, I can't believe I'm gonna repeat it, right? <laughs> I was saying, look, the idea is the influencer, you give it this power and it will have legs and it will spread. <laughs> Whoa, right? But it's true. These things, if you, if you gear them up right, they will go off on their own and live these amazing lives, right? So 
take this and, and carry this over to your business marketing messages if they're not taking off the way you want them to. Are you legitimately serving? Are you doing something of value? Because if you're serving yourself, people sniff that out instantly and you'll see it in terms of the results just being self-damping. So I promised Q&A and then I talked my head off. Um, please, questions.